enough to paint lonesome black and blue. Yeah, I have you, and you have me. That puts a bow up in the sky, tells the rain to cease. We've had a Hello and welcome back to the channel. This week we are processing close to 100 pounds of produce that we purchased between two farms and the grocery store. And obviously we have a lot to go through, so let's go ahead and get started. So it is the next day. I got all of the carrots cut up yesterday and I'm waiting for our chuck roast to defrost. Because the first thing that I'm going to can with the carrots and some of the potatoes is going to be beef stew. So I'm going to wait till that's defrosted, cut that up, add it all to the jars, and then whatever's left over from the carrots and the potatoes are going to be canned separately. So while I'm waiting for that to defrost, I'm going to cut up the white yams that I picked up and I'm going to just be doing these by themselves in some jars with butter and some brown sugar. I love candied yams, so I'm very excited for this. It's gonna be a nice, easy, ready to eat side. So first things first, we need to get all of these peeled. So now that we have these all peeled, we're just going to dice them in some very small slices. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of butter and brown sugar to the jars. I think I'm going to go through a lot of the butter that I can, but that's all right. And I'm doing it to about a one inch headspace, but I'm not going to be adding liquid into these. So they're going to be canned just like this once I add in the brown sugar. Just wipe to make sure that there's no sugar on them. Now, given that I only have six of those jars, I'm not going to can them up just yet. I'm going to wait until I have my potatoes or my carrots or my other squash ready for canning. 
Since my meat isn't ready for me to cut up and use to can some beef stew, I'm going to wait to cut any potatoes or onions and I'm going to move on to some squash. And I have some acorn squash here that I'm going to get cut up. Okay, now that my hand is sore and everything is peeled, I'm just gonna cut these up bigger than I did the sweet potatoes because these are either going to serve as a side or I'm going to make a soup out of them when I go to open the cans. So it doesn't need to be super small. I would prefer these bigger. Okay, so these ones I am going to can in water with a little bit of salt. Just personal preference, I don't really know. I don't really have a method to what I'm doing which way. It's mostly just kind of a feeling. I feel like this would be better canned in water for the potential uses in the future that I have planned with it. So that's what I'm gonna do. And again, we're just gonna fill it um, about to one inch headspace. I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt in each. I don't have a recipe for this. I'm just kind of doing it the way I wanna do it. And I think a quarter teaspoon is just enough. I don't want too much in there because I would like to season it when it comes out, but I think just a little bit. I can based on feeling. How do I feel about squash, I guess. So I thought I had hit record and I didn't. So I'm just cutting up the chuck roast for the beef stew that we're gonna be canning up. It's still mostly frozen. I'm hoping that this will help it defrost a little bit faster so I can get it canned up tonight. And it's a lot easier to cut when it's frozen. So meat was on sale. It was buy one, get one free for the chuck roast. So that's what I did. I bought two uh, with the intention of doing exactly this. And I've just decided I'm actually, instead of keeping it in this bowl, I'm gonna put it out on this tray to hopefully get it to defrost faster. So we're gonna start with onions first. I hate cutting onions. Where's my scissors? I already know these onions are gonna mess me up. It's already started. Turn on the tears. Oh, it's burning. Burning already, you guys. Ooh, the issue is if I turn on the fan, I'm gonna have to put music over this because the fan makes just like really awful background noise videos. Oh my gosh. Oh no. it is. So the reason the garlic looks like this is because I had put it in a jar with olive oil. We're gonna add some broth just to give it a little liquid so it stirs around a little bit better. We now have our garlic paste that we'll be using for this recipe. Now, technically speaking, you are supposed to peel your potatoes before you can them. I didn't do that last time I made beef stew and I did not have an issue with it at all. As long as they are very well washed, they are pretty much okay in my personal opinion. If you are going for USDA rules or FDA rules, you would want to peel these, but the process is still the same. Peel or unpeeled, dice them up, and then you'll add them to your jar. The 
the meat is officially not frozen anymore. So we're just going to add a little bit to each jar. Uh, I don't really like to measure things. It's just not how I do it. It's not how we roll here. Um, so I'm just going to eyeball it for each jar. I don't know how much this is going to make. I'm adding more meat than I did the first time we made beef stew. I'm just kind of mashing the meat down to see how much space it takes up and I'm trying to kind of even these out a little bit. Mm, yeah. So I think I'll be able to do just a couple more jars. Um, and then we're going to go with some potatoes. Now we can move on to carrots. I'm gonna do two and a half teaspoons of garlic per, roughly, per jar. That might have been too much. I don't know if I have enough garlic. I'm doing half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to do half a teaspoon of salt, pepper, and thyme in each. the rims just to get any of that food residue off so we can get a good seal. I'm going to add a little bit of broth to each but the meat will also create its own juice so I don't I'm not going to fill it up to an inch headspace. I'm probably going to do about half the jar. So I'm actually going a little bit over half and I am going to have to wipe my rims down again. I didn't think about that. And there we go, 14 jars of that. I'm gonna get those moved over. So I can only fit seven quart jars in my canner at a time. So we started with our first seven. We're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna get the heat turned on. Okay, we are ready to start doing carrots. This should be easier than the beef stew. Okay, so I didn't want to open a whole another case of jars just for this last bit of carrot, so I just did them in the smaller jars. Um, and I'm just going to process these with everything else at the same time. I'm not super concerned about it. Some of these I'm going to do broth, and some I'm going to do water, depending on how much broth I have. If I have enough to do all of them, then I'll do all of them. And I'm just filling it to the one inch headspace.
So it's been a couple days since I first started the canning journey. Yesterday I only canned the potatoes that I had left, but I wanted to show you guys everything once it was canned and processed. I still have four pumpkins to do, two Hubbard squash, and one unknown squash. And I do plan on getting those done this week. So I did the carrots two different ways. One is the dry pack method and the other is with water in it. So this one just has about a tablespoon of butter and I think about half a teaspoon of salt and then they were put into the jar and they were canned just like this. And then these ones were put into the jar, added water to one inch headspace, added a little bit of salt and then canned. These were both canned for the same amount of time, which was 30 minutes. Now, the reason I did that was because I wanted to do a texture difference. I wanted to see if we liked the dry packed method more. Theoretically, and what I have seen from others doing this method, it's supposed to turn out a little bit less mushy than the ones that are covered in water. So I wanted to test that myself and find out how we liked it best. We did have one jar of the dry packed carrots not seal. Actually, we had a few jars not seal and that's due to me using water to clean the rinse instead of white vinegar. And I had done that because I've been seeing a lot of people blame white vinegar for their jar lids deteriorating faster or coming unsealed. Um, personally, that was not my experience this time. I had a lot more failures with just cleaning it with water. So I switched back to vinegar and I'm not going to clean it with just water. I also canned up some yams. So these are the white yams and I did the dry pack method for these as well. So again, these just have a tablespoon of butter and then I added the diced yams and then I added a teaspoon of brown sugar to finish it off and then I processed these for 90 minutes. I also canned up our beef stew and these were canned to the book minus probably adding liquid. I only did it about three quarters full of broth and then the rest I just let the juices from the meat add to the liquid. And here are my potatoes that I dry packed as well. And again, this was just about a tablespoon of butter and a little bit of salt. And these were canned for 30 minutes. And then the acorn squash I did put in water. And that's mostly because these are all going to be used in soups. So texture, it being super squishy is not really a concern for us. Um, when it comes to using the squash, we're not going to be eating these straight out of the jar or just as a side. More than likely, maybe I'll fry them up. But other than that, I plan to mostly use these for soups. So I did it in the water just because I felt like it. When I am canning, I try to listen to my intuition a lot and my intuition just told me to can these in water instead of the dry pack method. And now that all of those are canned and cooled, I can get to washing them, organizing them, labeling them, and then we can move on to the rest of the produce we have to process.
So we have gotten almost everything that we had purchased all canned up. I still have the two large blue Hubbard squash and one other squash that I don't know what it is. So let's go over everything that we canned and how much of each. So we have 14 pints plus three half pints of carrots, 13 pints of potatoes, six pints of yams, nine pints of acorn squash, 16 quarts of beef stew, and 11 quarts of pumpkin. We definitely have limited space, so we are trying to be careful about what we're canning and what we are purchasing to can. So right now I think we are close to done in terms of canning. We may get some turkeys on sale after Thanksgiving and can those up, but for right now we are happy with the amount that we have canned, and it just feels good to have a little bit of our stock back up. So thank Thank you so much for watching this week's video. We hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any questions about any of the canning methods that I use, definitely leave them down in the comments and I will answer those. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our adventures.